Good morning, UUCLB family. I'm Michael Light. On the second Sunday of each month, our congregation sponsors a special collection in support of a local community organization whose values and goals are in alignment with our own. For the month of November, our designated recipient organization is Interval House, Crisis Shelters and Centers for Victims of Domestic Violence. Now, Interval House is a wonderful organization, and here's one of the main reasons why. From its founding, it was intended to be multicultural, multilingual, as well as intersectional. So as an organization, when we had domestic violence victims who did not speak English, the police called Interval House to come translate and to provide services. Services typically meant housing. And Interval House started in a modest three bedroom home in Seal Beach. They encountered a lot of NIMBY with not in my backyard, yet that property is still there. We still house and provide services to clients in that space. And most importantly, we've expanded to eight locations. Now I have worked with Interval House as a volunteer as a staff member uh, directing their male engagement program and in my most recent stint as an independent contractor designing curricula again working with um, at-risk fathers to prevent domestic violence in their relationships i have appreciated the intersectional nature of interval house but also the fact that this organization functions like a family all clients that come in they receive a warm blanket of services and love and care from the staff. And many of the staff at Interval House started as the very clients they're serving. There are even some itty bitty kids that are now case managers at Interval House. And that's one of the things that's really cool. Um, and so I definitely encourage you to support this organization because they and we, I'm still part of Team Interval House. I've, I've done 5Ks, I've you know done weight loss challenges, uh, you name it. I've, I've been a member of Team Interval House, um, as I said, for nearly 20 years, very proudly. Um, they provide medical services, a 24 hour hotline. Uh, they provide legal services, including uh, filing for restraining orders, but also going to court with you. Um, when you have to do all that as a survivor. Uh, they provide housing, whether it be emergency shelter, uh, although all the beds are currently full, as you might imagine, during this time of COVID, um, domestic violence has spiked. So um, all the beds are full. However, services are still being rendered remotely uh, via some virtual communication medium. So you're definitely encouraged to reach out to Interval House um, for services. And Again, the services are very comprehensive and they are provided in over 77 languages and dialects. Um, so we have people representing virtually every continent with the exception of Antarctica. I don't think I've seen anybody from Antarctica yet, but, um, and we have community groups uh, based around culture. So I encourage you to support Innova House uh, to the best of your ability every dollar every dime helps um, you are encouraged to use the tithely app and you can just put in the memo line special collection or interval house if you're writing a check again put in the memo line special collection and interval house and you can mail that into the church or you can use the uh, on the website um, go under the give tab so there are many ways that you can give to support this wonderful organization and i encourage you to do so so thank you again, UCLB family, for your generosity and for your care for the folks out there who are still suffering and in various degrees of silence. So once again, give generously and we thank you.
Good morning and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of Long Beach. Quite literally, I am here in Wilder Hall. So we are so glad that you are joining us for our Sunday service. I'm Carol Quinlan and I'm grateful to be your worship associate today after this long and stressful election week. Our service is live streaming today from Wilder Hall on Zoom and Facebook. Please be assured that all of the participants are following precautions to safely bring church to your home today. After the service, please stay on for our Zoom coffee hour to share your thoughts and feelings with our supportive community. Swing by our parking lot from 1130 to 1230 for a drive through coffee hour to say hello to UUCLB staff and members from the safe distance of your car. And next week on Sunday, November 15th, we'll have another drive through as well. So if you can't make it today, we hope you can next week. UUCLB is a welcoming and inclusive religious community rooted in love, trust, and freedom. We celebrate our congregation's diversity of abilities, ethnicities, gender identities, sexual orientations, and family structures and seek to grow our multicultural, anti-racist, anti-oppressive congregation and denomination. We are bound together in a shared covenant of right relations to build a religious community guided by respect and sustained by our Unitarian Universalist principles. A special welcome if you're visiting or new to our church this morning, we're so glad that you're here. Please reach out to Reverend Lissa or email membership at uuclb.org so we can get to know you better and help you get connected. I offer these opening words of poetry from the award-winning poet Alberto Rios, the inaugural poet laureate of Arizona. It is entitled, We Are of a Tribe. We plant seeds in the ground and dreams in the sky hoping that someday the roots of one will meet the upstretched limbs of the other. It has not happened yet. Still, together, we nod unafraid of strangers. Inside us, we know something about each other. We are all members of the secret tribe of eyes looking upward. Even as we stand on uncertain ground, up there, the dream is indifferent to time, impervious to borders, to fences, to reservations. This sky is our greater home. It is the place and the feeling we have in common. This place requires no passport. The sky will not be fenced. Traveler, look up, stay a while. Know that you always have a home here. I will now kindle our chalice flame as a symbol of our faith. May it be a beacon of an abundant hope, a greater love, a deeper peace, and a bolder justice for our nation and for our world. Come, let us worship together. Cantale 
la justicia de la vida. Arraigame, libérame, fuente de amor, ven a mí, ven a mí. Good morning. I'm Naomi Yoshida, UUCLV's Director of Religious Education. I am elated to be here with you this morning. Wasn't that rain yesterday so refreshing? And I hope some of you got to see and feel the hail. I was in a kindergarten class on election day where the children were learning about the process of voting. The teacher had the children vote all day um, on the order of their scheduled activities. Do you wanna do math or art? While not everyone agreed, a majority selected art. The teacher explained that since more children voted for art, that that's what would be next. The students who voted for math did not complain. It was eye-opening to see how the children felt empowered um, to change the schedule of the day by just voting. They voted a couple more times during the day. Um, interestingly, they did not always choose what was fun or easy. Um, they actually voted for literacy centers over PE. They were experiencing democracy in action. <coughs> Last night, I took note in the president-elect's call for unity for our nation that every single one of our seven principles was within and even the proposed eighth principle. It was incorporated in those heartfelt words. Each person is important. Be kind in all you do. We're free to learn together and search for what is true. All people need a voice, build a fair and peaceful world, care for the earth we share. The children's version of the proposed eighth principle is prepare our world for a better future, free from racism and oppression. So, how do we learn to listen to every voice? It starts at home. It grows as we learn to respect each other in the classroom. And for us, it is nurtured here at church. May we continue to dream big, to take a moment to dance in the rain, splash in the puddles, and always strive to be the change that we want to see in the world. Blessed be. Good morning, everyone. So good to be with you and to be here on campus as we are together processing and reflecting and celebrating this long week. Uh, Tuesday through Sunday has felt like one long day, hasn't it? And so here we are together to celebrate, to center, to come back into our bodies and into our shared community. I wanna join our time of meditation this morning by focusing a bit on your body. This week, many of us have spent countless hours in front of a screen and perhaps you have been you know, eating and drinking and not sleeping as much and so I just want you to take a minute and come into your own body and just focus on your breath for a minute and check in a little bit, maybe place a hand on your heart and just tune in and see how you are feeling. Take a pause, notice any sensations in that body of yours 
And I'm gonna invite you into a quick body meditation. And you can do this seated or if you'd like to stand. And just to the best of your ability and, and what you are feeling right now, this is, this is for you and take it or you know, do your own thing, whatever is feeling good to you this morning. First, invite you to stretch, reach those arms up to the sky and take a deep breath. Then reach those arms out wide. Imagine that those arms are outstretched towards your neighbor, towards our members here in this community, towards your family, towards everyone in our nation. Stretch those arms wide. Take another deep and cleansing breath. And bring those arms in towards your heart and give yourself a hug. Give yourself a hug. Put your arms around your own body and thank your body for being here, for waking up, for doing all the tasks that need to be done. Offer yourself gratitude. Now I'm gonna invite you to open those arms and stretch them out, stretch those hands out to receive. Receive the unknown, receive the good, to receive love. Stretch those arms out. And let's do that one more time if you are willing and able and, and wish to. So stretch those arms up. Look up and stretch your neck up towards the sky. Reach those arms out. See community to your left and to your right. Imagine hands reaching out to hold yours. Then bring those arms in and give yourself a hug. Offer yourself gratitude and love. And then open your hands. Open your hands to receive and to give. May they be open to the future we share the future we move into with uncertainty and with hope. Now I'm gonna invite you into a quick song and this is from Holly Near. She's a, a folk singer and an activist and I invite you to just sing along and I'm gonna sing one lyric and then you can sing it in your space or simply listen and hold those spaces as more meditation. It's called I am willing. I am willing. And I am open. And I am open. To be hopeless, to be hopeless. Would seem so strange, would seem so strange. It would dishonor, it would dishonor those who came before us, those who came before us. So lift me up, so lift me up to the light of change, to the light of change. I am willing and I am open to be hopeless. What seems so strange, it would dishonor those who came before us. So lift me up to the light of change. 
God of many names, spirit of love, river of life, which flows through each and every person. We come together in safe and supportive community rooted in trust and freedom to celebrate a historic choice made this week, a choice to embrace the heart of democracy where every voice and every vote counts, a choice to cast aside hate and to lift up love. Spirit of life, we come together with the hopeful anticipation of unfolding history before us and we acknowledge the long arc of the universe. We celebrate all the strides for progress, knowing how much of our project of democracy is yet to be achieved. We lament all that has been lost, and we pledge ourselves to a future yet unknown, whispering like a prayer the names of those who have come before us, the beloved dead, the names of our children, and all of those unnamed generations to come. We are proud, we are resilient, we are strong. We are grateful, we are joyful, and we are ready for the work ahead. So let us bring our full selves, our whole bodies, our hearts, our minds, our hands into the promise of this day. Let us give thanks for this progressive community of faith which surrounds us even in distance and embraces us just as we are. Let us give thanks for this progressive religious community which beckons us towards a deeper love and a truer justice. Bless these bodies of ours, good and whole and holy. Bless our relationships and our partnerships and our marriages. Keep our families healthy and strong. Let us pray today for a world in which all may live and love freely and let us commit to build that beloved community here on earth, this day, and all the days to come. May it be so, and amen. And now I want to move into a time of joys and sorrows to lift up all we are carrying as a community. And so now's the time to enter into the chat what you'd like to share with our beloved community here. Something that's been on your heart that you want to lift up and to help others support you with. Maybe you're feeling and thinking things about the election that you want us to share and coffee hour will also be a time for us to do that as well. So I'm going to take a moment and to visit our beautiful chalice altar table that has been prepared for us by Lisa Jones of the Chalice Guild. And I'm going to pour some water into our common bowl and place the stones that we are carrying into that bowl. And we're here, we'll, we'll hear some music from Francisco and then I will lift up those joys and concerns on our heart.
bridges between our divisions. I reach out to you. Will you reach out to me with all of our voices and all of our visions? Friends, we could make such sweet harmony, building bridges between our divisions. I reach out to you. Will you reach out to me with all of our voices and all of our visions? Friends, we could make such sweet harmony. Friends, we could make such sweet harmony. Friends, we could make such sweet harmony. So we lift up all of these joys and we celebrate with you we celebrate with our country and for all that this means to so many people we witness and surround you with the care of this community we mourn our losses and and hold us tenderly in our grief and let's continue to stretch those arms wide to feel our community surrounding us loving us, holding us, marching with us, working with us, moving together towards deeper love and greater justice. May it be so and amen. We're now going to turn to our offering and hear some music from David James. And I'm gonna post in the comments um, how to again, do that text to give. And so just look in the chat for that text to give information. And again, our morning offering will be dedicated to the great work of Interval House. Our morning offering will now be given and received. Good morning. This song was written by Stephen Van Zandt, a longtime guitar player in Bruce Springsteen's band. And the river opens for the righteous. And the river opens for the righteous. And the river opens for the righteous. Someday I was walking with my brother. He wandered. What's on my mind? I said what I believe in my soul Ain't what I'm seeing with my eyes And we can't turn our back this time I am a patriot And I love my country Because my country Is all I know I want to be with my family People who understand me no place else to go. I am a patriot. And I was talking with my sister. She was crying. I said, baby, what's on your mind? She said, I want to run like a lion. Released from the cages. Released from the rages. Burning my heart tonight. I am a patriot and I love my country because my country is all I know. And I ain't no communist, and I ain't no capitalist, and I ain't no socialist, I ain't no imperialist, I ain't no democrat. Ain't no Republican, I only know one party, and its name is freedom. I am, I am, I am, I am a patriot, and I love my country, because my country 
country is all I know. And the river opens to the righteous, and the river opens to the righteous, and the river opens to the righteous someday. Someday. Thank you. That was awesome. Thanks again for joining us this morning. Um, to start our sermon today, I want to offer another poem uh, from the Native American poet Joy Harjo. It's called Praise the Rain. Praise the rain, the seagull dive, the curl of plant, the raven talk, praise the hurt, the house slack, the stand of trees, the dignity, praise the dark, the moon cradle, the sky fall, the bear sleep, praise the mist, the warrior name, the earth eclipse, the fired leap, praise the backwards, upward sky, the baby cry, the spirit food, Praise canoe, the fish rush, the hole for frog, the upside down. Praise the day, the cloud cup, the mind flat. Forget it all. Praise crazy, praise sad. Praise the path on which we're led. Praise the roads on earth and water. Praise the eater and the eaten. Praise beginnings, praise the end. Praise the song and praise the singer. Praise the rain, it brings more rain. Praise the rain, it brings more rain. Rains fell for the first time here in Southern California this fall. Doesn't the air smell and feel so incredible, so cool and refreshing. The earth feels new again, cleansed. Every blade of grass seems to be standing on its end and every leaf is just reaching for air and breathing it in and every flower seems alive in a new way, only in that way that a deep watering can provide. Southern California has been so dry over these past few months. A tinderbox of scorched brush and dusty terrain. Fires seem to pop up out of nowhere. And the lush patches like our campus here at UUCLB appear to be these oases, thriving in spite of the eye. But if you take a closer look, you can see how these are not oases. These are hard fought patches of grass and garden and life where many diligent gardeners are sustaining and keeping it alive. I know this because I am not a great gardener, even though I want to be, and I know how hard it is to keep things alive. So I have a lot of plants in my new home, and I've tried my best to keep them going, but some of them, like even if I water them every single day, there will be the string of hot days of over a hundred, and I, at some point I just, I surrender. And I, I know that I've done my best and that others will continue to be alive. And sometimes I then replace them and enjoy them. And then they have the same fate. Now I could, I could do a few things with my own gardening skills. I can blame myself for my failure as a gardener, or I can start to understand what those plants have needed to thrive 
and to understand the subtle interplay of sun and shade and the change in our climate and perhaps new pests and new uh, diseases that are coming to attack those plants. And then I can start to understand how I've been doing my best to try to keep those plants thriving under harsher and harsher circumstances. Today, I woke up feeling like those penetrating and nourishing rains were a kind of grace. That spindly and dying basil plant on my patio now is standing at attention, ready to try again. Ready to be on this earth in a new way. And I've been given that loving nudge of nature to know that I can try again to nurture life. As that rain fell yesterday, I wonder how it felt to you. For me, I started to feel my heart softening and to let in all of the pain and suffering and the relief of this moment. The pain of the last four years, the hardships, and to start to open to a new kind of nourishment one that I didn't know I needed so, so badly. You see, so many of us have been diligently gardening, working harder and harder to keep our lives, our community's lives, our family's lives going in increasingly harsher and harsher circumstances. We have fought so hard for the lives of immigrants, Muslims, people of color, transgender people, immigrants, I said immigrants, disabled people, poor people, elders, young people. We have fought and we have protested and risen up and inspired. And in spite of those protests, so many have senselessly perished. And these past eight months have been the harshest. Our nation has been a tinderbox of sickness and desperation, racial injustice, scorched by the inhumane policies and a callously negligent federal government. And we've seen those fires of hatred and white supremacy stoked and emboldened. And we've seen how so many, in spite of the work, have languished in this hostile climate. We now finally know with great relief and much rejoicing that this is not the end of the story. And those rains yesterday seemed to be a message to us that it is safe to begin feeling hope once again see that outcome we experienced this week is indebted to the upswelling of the grassroots. The gardeners of our beloved communities, the activists, the organizers, the poll workers, the ordinary people just like you and me who have refused to let democracy die on the vine. And this storm of our election has brought us rains to nourish us, rains of hope. Can you feel the hope starting to infuse you again? Maybe when you stretched your arms out this morning, you felt pulsing through you a new life force, ready to start again ready to reach out and outstretch your hand to another's. Hope is this amazing feeling of optimism and possibility, and it is not grounded in, in some fantasy, but it is grounded in the reality of history unfolding its arc 
towards more justice, more compassion, more love. This outcome that we celebrate today has been hard fought. It has been earned by using every tool in the shed to ensure that our future will be different than the current reality. And even if we wished that this election had produced a greater rejection of the past, the results are not accidental or inconsequential. We know that the work will continue, the work that has gone long before these four years and will extend far into the future. That future is ours to create. While we are new to each other here at UUCLB and we have not spent every day of the past four years together laboring, protesting, connecting, building our partnerships, building our families, we share an arc, we share a story. And today it takes a hopeful turn. And I'm so grateful that we get to experience the meaning of this moment together and to share our thoughts and feelings and to build with each other. I hope that you feel that renewed sense of energy today as I do. And I'm so grateful that we have this beloved community to channel that energy into, to create our future and to join with our partners and people yet to join with us to build a better world. I wanna to close today with another poem because I think that we've heard so many words and so much talking over the past few weeks and days and poetry is a way for us to touch another place in our minds and our hearts that is yet untouched by other kinds of speech. It's The Cure at Troy by the Irish poet Seamus Haney it's a favorite of our new president-elect, Joe Biden. The Cure of Troy. Human beings suffer. They torture one another. They get hurt and get hard. No poem or play or song can fully right a wrong inflicted and endured. History says, don't hope on this side of the grave. But then, once in a lifetime, the longed for tidal wave of justice can rise up and hope and history rhyme. So hope for a great sea change on the far side of revenge. Believe that a further shore is reachable from here. Believe in miracles and cures and healing wells. Call miracle self-healing, the utter self-revealing double take of feeling. If there's a fire on the mountain and lightning and storm and a God speaks from the sky, that means someone is hearing the outcry and the birth cry of new life at its term. It means once in a lifetime, that justice can rise up and hope and history rhyme. May it be so and amen. We are building a new way. We are building.
building a new way. We are building a new way, feeling stronger every day. We are building a new way. We are working. We are working to be free. We are working to be free. We are working to be free. Hate and greed and jealousy. We are working to be free. We can feed our every need. 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 Start with love that is the seed. We can feed our every need. Peace and freedom is our cry. Peace and freedom is our cry. Peace and freedom is our cry. Without these, this world will die. Peace and freedom is our cry. I want to thank everyone who helped to participate in today's service and to thank our amazing tech team, Paul Goodwin and Kevin Salger. Thank you for trying all these new things with us today. And we're so grateful that we got to be with you this morning in real time. And we'll try that again next week. Um, so please do come and join our drive through coffee hour this afternoon if you'd like. I'm going to stay on for our coffee hour time for a few minutes and then go out and join our drive through just to say hi and beep your horn if you like and celebrate a little bit. We're here with you. Um, and I'm going to leave you with these words from uh, John Murray, who was an 18th century universalist. And I think these words are really important for us as we go forth we celebrate but we also prepare ourselves for the work ahead and to reach out beyond our comfort zone to reach out to our neighbors to bring in new partners to usher in our future together he says go out into the highways and byways of america give the people something of your vision you may possess only a small light but uncover it let it shine Use it to bring more light and understanding to the hearts and minds of all people. Give them not hell, but hope and courage. I extinguish this chalice, but not the light of truth, the warmth of love, or the fire of commitment. These we hold in our hearts until we are together again. <laughs>